All right, guys, back again with another video, and it's going to be on the Wilson uh, 1000, 5000 versus the Striker SRA10, the shootout. Which one is better? All right. All right, let's get started. Okay, so there's two variants of the Wilson, right? There's the Wilson 1000 and there's the Wilson 5000. So I'll kind of briefly cover all three antennas, the two Wilsons and the Striker. So the Wilson 1000, actually with all three, they're all compromised quarter wave antennas. When I say compromised, I mean that they're they're less than their physical size is less than a quarter wave. So, and if a quarter wave has zero dB gain, then actually these three antennas all have less than zero dB gain. In other words, they have negative gain. So, I put here in the description just you know neg less than zero. I estimate it probably to be maybe negative two or three dB I something like that. So, yeah, not perfectly ideal, but, you know, and for CB, the wavelength's so long that, you know, for practical use, we need to get the, the antenna a little shorter so it's more practical to be on a vehicle, right? So, you know, that's, that's the purpose. But ideally, yeah, you'd be running a quarter wave whip, right? So, um, now as far as the, uh, the uh, power handling, tunable frequency, all this stuff. Okay, so the tunable frequency range, this is what's claimed on the website, and it's uh, actually roadprobrands.com is the website. So it looks like they got bought out, and that's you know who uh, now manages Wilson. Um, says uh, that uh, you know the, the tunable frequency range is 26 to 30 megahertz. Um, that means 10 and 11 meter band, right? Doesn't and I did the uh, SWR testing, and you know you'll see in the results that yeah, it's really good for only 10 and 11 meters. And actually, all all three of these antennas, that's kind of the case. As far as power handling, it claims 3,000 watts, although it is a Wilson 1000. I'm not sure if it originally, you know, was what's the point of it being called the 1000? Was it originally, you know, 1,000 watts, and then they changed it to three? I don't know why. Um, you know where that came from kind of uh doesn't match because the wilson 5000 does claim 5000 watts while it's the 5000 model um so as far as the whip length uh about 62 and a half i measured actually the wilson 5000 1000 is the same whip from what i could tell and the mag mount diameter is a five inch magnet actually it's the same on the striker it looks like the magnet is virtually identical on all three so no difference really there the bandwidth, now when I refer to bandwidth, we're talking about the two to one or better SWR bandwidth. And uh, the website didn't really say anything about that, but I measured it at 1.57 megahertz. That means, you know, where it's below at or below two to one SWR. And of course, you know, depending on your tuning, you could move that right up and down, but the bandwidth itself kind of stays the same, but where it goes is where based on your tuning. Um, now the coax it came with is RG58. Now the Wilson 5000, it looks like it came with RG8X. So the difference in those two, and I'll cover the Wilson 5000 next, but um, that seems to be one of the main differentiators aside from the size of the base of the coil. Um, and then the warranty is a one year and a price around 109.95. Actually, that's uh, I just checked a well caught uh, radio uh, radio's website and it was actually 99.95. So they lowered the price a little bit. Maybe it's on sale. So. Now, if you look at their documentation on the Wilson 1000, uh, they talk about uh, power uh, or gain performance against the K40. It's interesting they bring up the K40. To me, that's kind of almost outdated. I remember back, back, back in the you know years ago, the K40 was like the rival to the Wilson. I remember the Wilson 1000 or the K40. Which one should you get? You know, and it's oh, I got the K40. You know, and they, people had almost you know it's almost like Ford versus Chevy kind of you know. Um, but it was understood the K40 was definitely not as good of an antenna. I think for, um, they, I mean, they independently, and it's true, they it did an independent study and had and showed the gain. You know, it actually performed better uh, for one thing. But the main difference from I think m main people didn't want the K40s because of the power handling. It just it just didn't really handle that much power. It handled maybe three, four, five hundred watts, and that's it. And people would regularly burn them up with a with a four pill. I remember that. So, you know, anybody who was running a four pill or more, you, you have no choice. You could maybe get away with a two pill, but I've even heard cases where people burn them up with two pills. So, go figure. Crazy, right? Why even you don't want an antenna that could handle any power? You just and you know they were a little cheaper. 
I remember the Wilson was a little more money, so you know you could pay a little bit more. But now it's like the price is almost the same. So I don't know why anybody honestly would buy a K40. Um, but uh, they said 58% more power gain. 58%. It's funny. It's funny. Oh, I say 58%. It's funny to me because an intended manufacturer saying it in a form of percentage is such a kind of a gimmickal way of making it appear more than it really is. So you know when it comes to power, you know like signal strength and, and gain and stuff, 3 dB is a hundred percent power difference, right? 3 dB is doubling your power. So 58% is easy to get to. Well, if you calculate it, 58% power difference is, is a 2.3 dB, which is still significant. I think that's definitely worth noting. That's a, actually, that's more of a difference than I thought it was going to be. So it, it kind of tells me the K40 is not that great because, um, you know, they're relatively similar size. You know, the whips are within a few inches. I think the K40 is a little shorter, but not much. But uh, the Wilson definitely performs better. So if you have a K40, I would definitely upgrade. It would be an upgrade uh, to go to a Wilson. Now, the question is, if you have a Wilson 1000, do you go to a Wilson 5000? I did performance tests between these three antennas. And it's coming in later in this video. And you're going to be maybe surprised or not surprised. I don't know. But uh, interesting results nonetheless. All right, so the Wilson 5000, main difference is the, you know, the power handling. The base of the coil is bigger. Um, same five inch magnet, um, the, uh, the coax from what I can tell and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it, it looks to like it came with RG eight X versus RG 58. So I'm trying to find documentation. I have the Wilson 5,000 mag mount. I don't know what happened to my original Wilson 1000. I, I have both, but I don't know where the magnet mount part. I think I know what happened. I, I changed out the coax. The 58 either got messed up or bad, or maybe it was RG8X. I don't know, but I don't have the original, so I don't know for sure, but I believe it's RG58 on the 1000 and RG8X on the Wilson 5000. So that alone, with the price being only 10 or $20 difference, the two reasons, I would just go with the Wilson 5000 for the, you know, this is the better coax it comes with. So just, just a thought. The RF bandwidth. So. Uh, interesting. It's a little narrower. So uh, on the on the Wilson 1000, going back to the Wilson 1000, 1.57 megahertz of bandwidth. Where the Wilson 5000, even though it had a bigger coil, I thought it would probably have a lower Q, not a higher Q. But it actually is narrower bandwidth. 1.42 megahertz of RF bandwidth, two to one or better SWR. So go figure. Not what I was expecting, but uh, that's what the tests came up with. Um, and now the striker. So the striker, um, I didn't expect the bandwidth to be that much difference between the three antennas. So um, the striker is notably better when it comes to the RF bandwidth. It's a uh, 2.11. As as and on their website, it actually does uh, note uh, RF bandwidth. It just says bandwidth. Doesn't really say what it is, but pretty much most antenna manufacturers are referring to two to one or, or better SWR. It doesn't say there, but that's what it is. I measured 2.07. I mean, that's just close enough margin of error right there. So I basically tested the same as what they had. So that's good. That means our, both our tests it proves that my testing is good and their results, you know, they're not lying. They, you know, it looked like a pretty good match. Uh, so that wider bandwidth could be useful. The question is, are we uh, compromising in performance by having a, uh, a lower Q, right? So we'll see. Um, the other thing that's potentially better um well it is better is the warranty is a two-year warranty compared to a one-year warranty on the wilsons so that that's good um uh, but the bandwidth so we'll see is the bandwidth better is it worth it are you losing performance or not um i like the wider bandwidth and there's a very good useful thing about having two megahertz of rf bandwidth versus about 1.5 megahertz and all, all which i'll describe later in the video so okay now antenna testing so what I did was I put it in the center of a, a four-door sedan, okay, a regular car. So now I believe it would be different depending on the car, depending on where on the car, or if it's a type of, type of car, if it's an SUV. It probably will vary. I don't know how much, but you know this is results based on a car, a sedan with on the center of a roof. So you know as far as performance comparison, I think as long as you're comparing the same, um, you know, let's say. Uh, location, same everything. It should be a fair test to compare performance depending on the vehicle. But when it comes to SWR, it might vary depending on the vehicle, if that makes sense. So my performance test, 
Um, I think it's a, it's you know it's going to be um, the differences you're going to see um, would probably be the same differences you'd see on any vehicle. Now SWR might change a little bit depending on the vehicle. Hopefully that made sense. So okay, moving on. Here it is. So what is the difference? What is the signal strength difference? Okay, Wilson 1000 S9, Wilson 5000 S9, Striker SR A10 S9. Okay, that was measured 10 miles away on my remote RSBA1 software ICOM 7100 station. So my conclusion, and actually this is to be expected, the performance is identical. And if you think about it, actually it makes sense because figure the antennas are all very similar. They're they're all base loads, base loaded antennas. They're they're um, the overall whip is I think the difference was like a three quarters of an inch difference in the whip length. I think I measured 63 inch versus like 62 and a half or something, and where it come like where it starts on the on the uh, the overall length of the antenna uh, was like 68 and a half versus 67, so an inch, inch and a half. So that really de determines the performance of the antenna, the size, right? So in other words, a uncompromised quarter wave whip should do better. So I'll actually that's for a later video. I'm gonna uh, do a comparison with that, and I'll see the difference. You'll see the difference. Um, with a quarter wave antenna, is it worth having a big old nine foot whip slapping everything, slapping trees down and, you know, um, you know, is it worth it? We'll see, you know, is it worth it? Um, well, when it comes to a Wilson 1000 versus a Wilson 5000, if you have, let's say any three of these antennas, if you happen to have the strike or you happen to have the Wilson or the, don't, it, the conclusion is, is good. There's no difference in performance. Don't buy one versus the other. If you let's say have an existing Wilson 1000 and you're kind of bummed, oh, I wish I had the 5000. That thing's cooler. Look at big base on it, it's better. Um, no, there's not gonna notice any difference in performance. That's kind of nice. If you already have the antenna, don't bother buying it, I guess, a new one. You know, even the little uh, difference in the coax didn't, it's not gonna make, you know, the difference between RG58 and RG8X as far as DB loss at 18 feet is, is so insignificant, that's irrelevant too. Um, now the striker, it, it looked like even though it had a little lower uh, or, or uh, yeah, lower Q, a little wider RF bandwidth, it did not lose in any of its performance. It's an identical signal. So ide that's kind of the ideal scenario. More RF bandwidth, yet no compromise in the signal strength. So hey, perfect. So I'd say the striker is the winner when it comes to you know RF bandwidth and performance because although performance is identical, at least you got a little more RF bandwidth. Here's the chart, and you see some of my other videos. I do this on the uh, base station antenna testing I've done and some of my other uh, videos. This is the same kind of chart where I compare them. And you'll see here on the anything below 12 meters, the SWR just absolutely is horrendous. Even the 12 meter band is completely, basically useless. And it's not like you're gonna have an antenna tuner, you know, in the mobile. And it just doesn't make sense to run one of these antennas. If you're a ham and you wanna run other bands other than 10 and 11 meter band, don't, don't bother with one of these antennas. Um, so the conclusion with the SWR testing, you know, when it comes to the RF bandwidth, two to one or better, the Wilson 1000 is 1 1.57 megahertz. Wilson 5000 at 1.42 megahertz and the Striker at 2.07 megahertz of RF bandwidth, two to one better SWR. Okay, so why am I so talking about so much about this uh, RF bandwidth? Because you can actually use only one of these antennas on both the 10 and 11 meter band without an antenna tuner. And that is the Striker. And how I conclude that is, is because if you talk on the uh, technician class portion of the uh, um, 10 meter band, you know, um, uh, upper side band 28.3 to 28.500, then, and you want to also be on CB down to channel one, you know, from channel one up to 28.500, that, that is 28.5 megahertz uh, minus 26.965, you know, channel one on CB. That's 1.54 megahertz of RF bandwidth. And although the Wilson 1000 barely, barely fits in there, I mean, we're talking, it's barely, you have to get it right on the center frequency of around 27.7 to do that. The Striker easily does it. And I tested it. I actually did tune the Striker to 27.7 and it would match around 1.7, 1.8 to one on channel one of the CB band and, and 1.8 to one on 28.5. So that's pretty cool. So 
that is my conclusion. Here's the conclusion, which is the Wilson 1000, Wilson 5000, and Stryker SR A10 have the same signal. Trans both transmit and receive. But the Stryker is more ideal for using it for both 10 and 11 meter band because of its wider RF bandwidth. Now when I say both transmit and receive, okay, so a little uh, antenna, um, let's say uh, trivia, or I don't know, uh, education. Um, so this antennas have this uh, property we call antenna reciprocity. So antenna reciprocity means that the antenna transmit and receive characteristics are identical, meaning its ra radiation pattern and effective area are the same, regardless of whether it's transmitting or receiving signals. So I can conclude that even though I transmitted to a receive station, the, the, the fact that the transmit uh, was the same, the receive will also be the same. Now, if you experienced an antenna where the performance is not the same for transmit and receive, there's, in other words, it wasn't doing antenna reciprocity, those are usually in, in cases where the antenna is not normally resonant for the frequency you're using. That'd be like in a case where it's like, um, like a disc cone or something that's just not, you know, the SWR is way out of whack. It's not resonant at that frequency. That's where that's, it's not the same case in this case. So anyway, that's a little, uh, little antenna, I don't know, trivia for you on that. It's a common thing to talk about antenna reciprocity. Uh, so I guess uh, based on this, I think the, uh, the winner is the striker because it has a little more RF bandwidth with the same performance, which is kind of ideal. Um, now, as far as power handling, I don't know. I mean, you guys out there, have you guys ever burnt up a Wilson 1000? I could, you know, I was running an eight pill. I never burned it up. Uh, let me know if you, if you burned up a Wilson 1000 or even a 5000 or a striker, how much power did it take? Uh, let me know in the comments. I, I'm really curious and that'd be kind of interesting. And uh, also anything incorrect in the video, definitely let me know. And, um, I think I got it right, but, um, anything incorrect, please let me know in the comments. I'll put it in the description. All right. Thanks again for watching the video guys. Take care.